here today. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Psalms 103. So Lord, we just uh, would bless your name today. We come to worship you. Sinful beings that we are, we come before you, thanking you for your grace and your mercy and your steadfast love. Oh, Lord, I just invite your presence here today. Bless our speaker today, Fabio, as he uh, brings us the word. Anoint his lips to bring us the, what you would have us here today. Thank you for our church family that's not here today. I pray blessings on them as they travel and uh, as they uh, go about whatever they're doing this weekend. But thank you for uh, your mercies in each of our lives today. Continue to bless us that we may be ambassadors for your will to those in a dying world, Lord. And thank you for this opportunity to come before you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Um, a few announcements before we do offering. First of all, if you would like to go on the walk today, it is going to be meeting at Lake Hennessy. Um, it's in your bulletin. It says uh, 3 o'clock by Lake Hennessy. It's the, this side of Lake Hennessy where the Con Valley um, Road meets the lake. If you have any questions, um, let me know after church if you would like to come. Um, secondly, there is a potluck next week. Um, the third Sabbath of the week. I know it is also alumni up at PUC, so if you are attending that, we will miss you, but if you are going to be here at church, we will be meeting downstairs for fellowship. Um, today's offering is for the Hope Channel International, and I looked up on their website and it says they started in 2003. They have 68 channels worldwide. They are broadcasting in 80 different languages, and their mission says, our mission is to help people prepare to live for Jesus in this world and be prepared for his soon return. So um, I know one of the countries that it listed that it broadcasts in is Ukraine. And I'm sure that those people need hope right now, um, along with so many people in the world. So if you would like to support that mission, you can put that offering in the plate. If you have somewhere else you would wish your offering to go, you can put it in an envelope and mark that on the, um, on the envelope. We will also be picking up a children's offering for the children for Christian education. In Proverbs 19, 17, it says, Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. I think that's neat that we're lending to the Lord. It's God who's given us everything. When we give to others, we're just given it back to the Lord, and he will repay us. So thank you for your offerings. If the deacons will please stand, we will have prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the opportunity to share with others. We thank you for the work that the Hope Channel does in this world. Bless our funds that we give. May it go to bless others, God. May it go to prepare people for your soon coming. May the work that Christian education does continue to bless this community and those who participate in it around the United States and the world. God, we thank you for the blessings that you have given us, and we thank you for the opportunity to share. In your name we pray, amen. All right, kids, Pepper, Libby, come and Jackson. <laughs> We've got some more kids. Gather up some offering.
Happy Sabbath. My name is Oliver Henry, and today I'll be reading Hebrews 8, 12. For I will forgive their wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more. Uh, we'd like to welcome our speaker, uh, Fabio Maya. He is formerly um, from PUC's mission department, and he's now working for the St. Helena Hospital's Blue Zone department. Um, so we are really thankful that you are here again. Um, we know we choose you to speak quite often because everyone enjoys it. So thank you for coming again, and we look forward to what you have to say. Good morning, church. Feliz Sabado. I'm going to speak from here. Is that okay with you guys? <clears throat> it's good to be back here at our church. I was in a chaplain's meeting, and Curtis asked me, like, Fabio, do you mind coming and preaching one of the Sabbaths this month? And I was like, of course. Just, just let me know when. So glad to have my family here, the, the kids, my wife, Trina, and... A friend of mine from Argentina is visiting over here, so he's he finding his way back in a camera because that's what he does. So, um, <clears throat> But it's good to be here and, and worship with you today. Let's pray. Dear Daddy, thank you so much for the opportunity to share your love, your forgiveness, and everything you do in our lives. Please guide me. May your spirit speak through me. Be with our family, our church family all over the world. That's what I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I'd like to share. <clears throat> I'd like to share with you a little bit today about a story of a friend of mine. This story goes started 28 years ago. Our church went through some difficult times the pastor from our church left and then we we got a new pastor and of course every time something like that happened we welcoming the new pastor was a, was a little difficult for the church because they missed the old pastor so my family got really close to this new pastor a young family they had two kids and my mom and my dad took good care of them and they became, started becoming part of our, our own family. And I remember um, growing up over there, I was about finishing college and this pastor of mine, he was a visionary. Um, a lot of, not a lot of people in the church understood what he was talking about. We're talking about 1994. He was talking about the internet before the internet, you know. Nowadays, we all have in our hands, we are all connected, but he was talking about something that was coming and it was gonna take over all over the world, but we couldn't, we couldn't see that. And I got really close to him and <clears throat> he one day invited me. It's like, Fabio, why don't you go and become a student missionary. And I asked him, like, Pastor Huimad, what, what is a student missionary? He's like, well, you're finishing college. And some of you guys already heard part of this story. But the story is a little longer today. Um, he's like, you can go for a year. We have schools and hospitals all over the world. And you can serve in one of those places as a student missionary. Um, so we're talking about a school. His dad was the president of the conference in South Africa. And he, we start sending faxes. There was no email back then. Uh, oh, it seems like so long ago. Like, okay. But that's how we communicate, fax back and forth. And we're waiting for that answer to come to see if we're going to be serving in South Africa. Um, but meanwhile, in 1994, there was a gen general conference meeting in Utrecht. Um, so he went to, uh, to that meeting. And while he was traveling through Spain, 
he stopped in one of our schools in Sagunto, in Spain. And that's where my friend Danny, Danny and his friend Arturo were missionaries from Argentina serving at the school. And when my pastor, Rimar, talked to them, he's like, hey, we need a student. Do you know someone that could be a student missionary for the next year here? And he's like, hey, I know someone that might be interested. So they called me from Spain to, in Brazil to see if I would like to be a student missionary. And it's interesting to look back 28 years ago that one decision, one call made a completely different in my whole life. Um, in my mind, serving in South Africa would be more beneficial. I would think that some, there's a place that would, uh, would need me more. But God was asking me to go to Spain. So I talked to my family and I was like, hey, what do you think if I go to Spain? And they're like, okay, if that's what you'd like to do, go ahead. And of course, I met my wife Trina over there. We went, um, we decided to, she was going back to Loma Linda to finish her master's. And I was done with college. So we start praying and asking God, like, okay, what's the next step? Um, and God opened the door for me to be a student missionary at La Sierra Academy. So I went to Southern California and became a student missionary, worked there for a year, and then started working for Loma Linda at the Drayson Center. And that was my trajectory as I end up over here. But that friend of mine, the pastor that was um, taking care of me all these years, we continue in contact. In fact, the last time that I saw him was at Pine Springs Ranch. Uh, he came uh, and he's like, Fabio, I'm a missionary in Palau now. I'm, I just got back from Palau, our family's over there and I'm teaching at a school over there. He went to Andrews, he studied over there, did his masters and he was in Palau. And I was like, Fabio, you should come to Palau one day. And I was like, yeah, maybe one day I'll be there. I went up in Fiji with Roger before that, but I, I, I always had a dream to go and be a missionary in Palau. But Pastor Rimar um, and his family went to Palau and started teaching at the school. And Palau is a, a small island, just like several islands in Fiji. Um, and he was really making an impact over there. But I remember it was January 23 of 2003. We are visiting, Trina and I went to Brazil and we're visiting for Christmas break. And I remember as it is today, I was sitting in the front room with my mom as she got a, a phone call. Back then we had no cell phones, the phone was at the wall. <clears throat> she went and, and answered the phone and she fell on her knees and started crying. And I was like, what happened? And then she's like, Pastor Huimar, Margaret, his wife, and the son got killed in Palau. And I don't know if you guys heard that story yet. It was a powerful story. But for me, it was personal. For my family, it was personal. Because one of my best friends had just killed in Palau. And of course, the information was still coming in, and we couldn't understand why, what happened. <clears throat> but little by little, we, we found out more, and someone broke into the house where they were living. And, and Palau, as same way as Fiji, Roger, it's a, it's a peaceful island where people, you're, you're welcome in a way that I, I felt home every time I go to visit those islands over there. So something like that, it's all completely out of the ordinary. They never had anything happen like that, especially in a way that happened. It was not just a tragedy, but the way that they were killed was unbelievable. And it was like, I kept asking why? Why my friend went all the way over there to be a missionary and lost his life and lost, but they have a little daughter also that was eight years old. And I want to 
um, asked Daniel to play the video. Um, it's a trailer that we're going to see right now about the story that just is a documentary that just came out about that story. Then if you can. When I was eight years old, my dad got a call to be a pastor in Palau. It was going to be just a whole new experience for all of us. I said, this is impossible. No, it's not possible. I just stood there, tears coming down, and I said, God, forgive us. Something then amazing happened that was not part of the program, that was completely unexpected. Everybody just looked about at each other, shocked. It was one of the most incredible periods of Palauan history. I always wanted to go back to Palau. We don't know what memories this is going to bring back, what emotions this is going to stir up. It was a very impactful moment in my life that I don't think I'll ever forget. had a chance to go to Palau in, when I was as a director of student missions from PUC. And I went with one of the student missionaries that I sent over there years ago. And we, had, we were able to connect with some people from the police. And just like you saw in the video, that gate the police was walking through. I walked to that gate and I met the guy that killed my friend. And I don't know if you had the experience of meeting someone that did something horrible to you. And it was like one of the craziest experiences of my life. In a matter of five minutes, I was in front of someone that took the, the life of one of my best friends and his family. And I was able to forgive him it was like an experience that was like, I was crying, like bawling right after for, for a long time. Because it was like, when you forgive someone, it changes your life. You just let it go. And, and the story goes on. Um, and, and what happened in that um, gym, gymnasium over there in Palau, when the mom, uh, Mr. Ms. Hood, and, and Melissa, the daughter that survived, was able to, to go. She was at the front of the gymnasium and she called at that moment the mom of the, the guy that killed her son to the front of the stage. And she's, what she says, like, we both lost our sons today. But I'll forgive you. That's, and think about years later, 15 years later, a couple of weeks ago, they just premiered that documentary in Palau, and the whole family went back and healed the whole nation because of that story. Last night, that movie was premiering in King, Texas, where Melissa and Michael, her husband now, where they live, and a thousand people were at the church. Today, they're sh doing another showing. They're going to show at Andrews also and I talked Melissa sent me a message today you know that she would be praying for, for us over here today and we're trying to bring the movie over here also 
so we can play. But it's growing in a way that it's, it's going to be all over the world. That story of fact, because he was from Brazil, so all South America. So I keep going back and thinking, you know, when that happened, that January 23rd, 2003, I couldn't understand why, I still don't understand why they have to go through what they went and, and, and that whole story happened. But think about the impact of a mom that forgave the guy that killed her son. Today has an impact in our church and people are gonna find about Jesus the love of Jesus because of that family. It's going, it's going to be all over the world. In fact, they're talking, I ask like, oh, can you come to PUC right away so you, we can show the movie over here to our community? And they're like, Fabio, it's getting to a proportion, to a proportion that, you know, the, the, the same company that did that movie, Chosen, it's gonna, they're taking over and it's going to be all over the world now. One story. One person, a friend of mine, that one time invited me to be a student missionary. His family story, it's going all over the world, showing God's love. And, and I'm so thankful. I can't wait for one day to sit under that mango tree and sit with him and tell him, like, you have no idea that that story changed my life and change the life of so many students over here at PUC. The people that we, we go to Fiji, the families that I'll be able to introduce to him, all the people that he never had the chance to meet. So I don't know what you're going through today. It's, it's, we live in a world that's like, it's, it's hard, you know. Carrie just mentioned like what, what's going on in Ukraine. We don't understand what's going on. We, it's hard for us to accept, to continue living our, our lives the way we're living nowadays, knowing that people are dying without any reason in the other side of the world. I don't understand either, but I trust that soon this is going to be over and we'll be able to see and live with our God that cares for us. So that's my message that I have for you today. A personal story that affect my life, affect the lives of my family. And hopefully one day you'll be able to see the whole story, not just the trailer, and how many people it was gonna impact. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share and to be able to, to learn with me and to be vulnerable with you today. Let's pray. Dear Daddy, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to be here today, to share a story of love, a story of forgiveness, even though we don't understand all the details and why things happen the way it happened. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Yes, please be with the people that are suffering right now, all the refugees, not just in Ukraine, but all over the world. Please be with the people that are looking for you, Father. Help us as a church that know the end of the story. To be with you. To be in love with our, our community. Continue guiding us. That's what I ask you. And come soon, Father. Come soon because we miss you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I know why you <laughs> want a Kleenex. Thank you for sharing your story, for sharing your tears, sharing your love. Uh, shall we stand for the benediction? Father God, we thank you. We thank you for Sabbath. We thank you for people like Fabio that are willing to share their story. And as he said, there are many stories like that out there. We want you to come soon. Until then, let's, let's appreciate the blessing of Sabbath, which shows how much you love us and uh, rejoice in the day. 
I pray everyone here has a good week and that we see you next week. Amen. <laughs>